Hello everyone, welcome to this video, Static Application Security Testing with CICD Pipelines using White Source. So in this video, we are going to take an overview about how to check for security. We will not cover all the security check, but we will only cover how to check for vulnerabilities in the source code or in the library. Then we will get an overview about vulnerabilities overview. So we will get more information about what is the vulnerabilities and the exposure database and how this maintained. Then we will understand how to check for security. So what is the static security scan that we are running in order to check for vulnerabilities in the source code or in the library. Then after that, we will introduce some extension about security extension for different vendors which exist on Azure Pipeline Marketplace so we can understand what is the extension existing now in the market. Then we will introduce our main extension which is the white source Bolt extension. Then we will give demo about white source Bolt and how to run that as a part of the CICD pipelines. But let me first give you a quick introduction about myself. My name is Mohammed Radwan. I'm a developer technologies MVP and principal DevOps consultant. I have been doing software development for more than 15 years now, working on several projects for different enterprise customers across different regions and countries. I heavily participated in the community, developed several frameworks, presented many sessions, holding various certificates for Azure and DevOps. I started back in 2002 as a classic ASB developer relocated multiple times in multiple countries, worked with several technologies and for different role and positions. And for the last eight years, I moved to consultancy-based role where I focused more on helping different companies, some of them from the Fortune 500, to improve their software development and delivery using DevOps and automation. I have developed and authored several frameworks, command line tools, and guides, you can find them on GitHub and Azure DevOps Marketplace. I like to share my experience. This is why I have a YouTube channel and blog where they have hundreds of videos and posts that share different topics from my real experience. I have presented many sessions in several user group, conferences, events, and customer sites as well in different countries. So I got the chance and the opportunity to work in different culture, project size, and company size as well, which helped me to have different experience. Here are some links for my activities. So what do we need to check for security? First, we need to make sure that our source code is not having any vulnerabilities. And this is the source code that we wrote every day. Also, we need to check our open source software libraries vulnerabilities because maybe we have a secure source code, but our libraries is not secure. You can watch this video for more information about Kubernetes cluster, how to deploy Docker image to Azure Kubernetes service, and how to configure CI CD pipelines for an end-to-end -end development and deployment scenario. We need also to check for the license allowance for uh, the open source libraries, because for example, the license may be not allowed to ship with a commercial application. So we need to make sure that the license allow. So we need to check for license allowance. We also need to check for the version of the library, because for example, there is some libraries outdated, which mean that it is not maintained anymore. It will be risked using that, not from the vulnerabilities, but from the risk of using uh, an outdated, there is no response for fixing the problem or the issue, which mean that this will having uh, an effect on my project. So let's get overview about vulnerabilities. So for example, if we get some of the, the risk of having OSS libraries or open source vulnerabilities, if we look at data breach report from Verizon, we can see that 85% of the vulnerabilities in the last year is the same as the top 10 vulnerabilities for the previous years, which means that the hacker is still targeting the top 10 vulnerabilities. And this is due to the lack of awareness and practices a common vulnerabilities and exposure database. It's a platform aimed to collect, maintain information about discovered computer security vulnerabilities. So for example, it will provide, describe for the identified vulnerabilities, then potential impact on affected system, 
Also, any work around or update to mitigate the issues. This common vulnerability and exposure database as a community effort. The National Vulnerabilities Database, which is another platform that depends on the Common Vulnerabilities Database. But this National Vulnerabilities Database is maintained or managed by the US government and it provides an enhanced information for the Common Vulnerabilities Database. For example, it gives impact score and rate, severity scores as well. Also, it gives a security checklist, a misconfiguration, and advanced search. So the relationship between the Common Vulnerability and National Vulnerabilities Database. Common Vulnerability Database is a community effort, while NVD or National Vulnerabilities Database is maintained by US government. Also, the NVD is provide enhanced information for each entry as a fixed information, severity score, and impact rating, and so on. So how do we check for vulnerabilities in the source code or in the library? So we're doing that by running a static application security testing. You can watch this video for more information about Docker containerization and where and how Docker can fit with DevOps and CI CD pipelines. And this can be done by different software vendors. For example, if we go for Azure Pipeline extension on the marketplace, we can see different vendors provide extension for static security analysis. So for example, if I search here, we can see that Black Dog, White Source, White Source Pool, Check Marks, Veracode, and many others. So this is the White Source Pool extension, which will be the extension that we will be using in our video. And here, how we can add that task to the pipeline. And this is the scanning report of the white pool result, which is divided into five sections, and each section has different parts. For example, this is a security analysis, which is divided into four parts. We will get in more details in the demo. For the demo about how to run white source pult as a part of the Azure pipeline scanning. Let's open the project, try white source. This is the project that I will use to scan for security. Navigate to the repo. So as we can see, I use a WebGot uh, project. So for those that they don't know WebGot, let me show you the readme. So as we can see, WebGot is insecure web application, which maintained by OWASP. So I will open the project homepage and the source code on GitHub. So this is the project web homepage so we can see more information about the project and here the project on github so it is insecure web application that designed to teach web application security lesson this is why it has many vulnerabilities to teach people and of course here how to install the project and use it so this is the poem or project object model because this is Java application, so it has POEM, which is the file that include all the build instructions. And in the source, we can see that it is a web application. And here are the controllers. And also has test for unit testing. So it's a complete application. So let's navigate to the pipeline where I create a build definition. The first task of the build is npm to install, to install npm on the machine, the build agent. The second is to use the Marvin, which will use the POM file to, to build the application. And the third task is the white source port, which will be used to scan the open source libraries for either vulnerabilities or license. Of course, I need to install white source pult extension on my organization, Azure DevOps organization. So here I should navigate to choose the repo and here just to copy and publish the artifacts. So let's queue the build and I will use Microsoft hosted agent uh, and using the Ubuntu image. So this will kick the build. 
prepare for the agent and once we get the agent start initializing the build check out the file npm install now the Marvin building the application and now the white source port we can see there is many ignore files because the white source port is the free version and I can't change the configuration so it doesn't include all the scanning for everything so now it's complete the scan and copy the file publish the artifacts so if I navigate to the artifacts I can see the package in the drop folder you can watch this video for more information about Git with animation. You will see different animated commands like branch, merge, rebase, cherry pick, and many others. I don't need it. And I can open the scanning report either from white source port this tab or from the navigation tab here. So let's open from here. So this is the scanning report or I can open from anywhere else. Uh, let's just get out of this page and I can navigate from this tab as well. So let's talk about the report or the scanning report. So the scanning report is divided into five sections. The first part is, as we can see here, the security analysis. The security analysis can give an overview of the scan and this could be green which means secure or yellow which means low or orange medium and red for high and this based on the highest severity found during the scan the severity is based or according to the nvd or national vulnerabilities database the next section is vulnerabilities libraries and this is the total libraries divided into the secure libraries and the vulnerable libraries and as we can see we have 20 one vulnerable libraries and note that we have 20 libraries outdated out of 21 vulnerable libraries the next part is severity distribution which is a breakdown for the vulnerable libraries so we can see that the 21 libraries here divided into 15 with high five medium and one low the last part in this section which is the aging vulnerable libraries which include the, the time or the length of time elapsed during found the vulnerable for this libraries for the first time the next section is securing vulnerabilities and as we can see here this is the table that lists all the vulnerabilities the first column is the severity score based on the nvd and we can see that we have also a link to the vulnerabilities on the common vulnerabilities database we also have the description for the vulnerabilities. It also has the link for the NVD or National Vulnerabilities Database. So for example, if I click on the link on National Vulnerabilities Database, we can see that to get more information about the vulnerabilities. And of course, also the top fix for these vulnerabilities. So this is the list of all vulnerabilities sorted by the high severity vulnerabilities first the medium low the third section is license risk and compliance this is the table of license distribution we can see that we have 23 types of license in our project and this table include all the types of license and associated with risk level for this type of license and the occurrence of this license the next part of this section is the license risk distribution which display how many licenses occur for this types of of the risk so for example we have 131 low risk and we have four high risk license of course i can navigate more to get down the fourth section is the outdated libraries so we can see this is all the outdated so i have 110 outdated libraries so this is the list of table and the first column is the name of the library the next column is the version description and also including the recommendation which include 
the the fix for example here consider updating to the latest version and of course the the link to the version also i can see here the number of version released after my current version so for example here we have 44 new version after the versions that i use in my current project so this is the outdated libraries all the list and the last part or the last section is the inventory which include all the libraries and the associated license with a link to more details about each type of license for example if i open the mit license i can get more information about this license type i can open another type apache 2 for example and so on so at least all the libraries at the end i would like to thank you for watching the video please if you have any question or comment don't hesitate to reach out you can find more information on my blog which will appear at the end of the video along with some other related video thank you